Jumping up, rising up. We are God's people, He has chosen us. Empire. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God, that we are here today, Father, tonight, Lord God, standing in your presence, Lord God. And Lord, as we are standing right now, Father, help us, Lord, to continue to anoint us, that you continue to use us for your glory, Father, because you don't anoint uh, a servant that a servant who likes to sit down and sleep, Lord God, but you like to use a servant who likes to stand up for you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we bind every plan, plot, assignment of the enemy tonight, Lord God, trying to block and hinder what you're about to do, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We come against that, Lord God, in Jesus' name. They ask you, Father, Lord God, that you welcome us, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God, tonight, Lord God, in Jesus' name, and help your people, Lord God, to understand, Lord God, the things that you're about to, to say tonight, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, uh, employ your mighty warring angels around us tonight, Lord God, in Jesus' name, as we go to war, Lord God, as your armies go to war tonight, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to be watchful, Lord God, each and every moment, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity that we are here and uh, for giving me as well the opportunity to stand here, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We're so thankful and grateful, Lord God, for everything, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep on standing. Why? Some people in other countries, including uh, countries that is full of communism and other kind of religion, you know, the people there are standing the whole hour, like not just one hour, but the whole day. They like to stand, they like to sing praises to the Lord, they like to hear preachings. And right now, in these last days, if you are a servant who likes to sit down in your comfort zone, the Lord will not going to use you. Again, if you are a servant of the Lord who likes to sit down on your comfort zone, the Lord will not going to use you, including me. I'm not just preaching to myself. I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching also to myself. So right now, I hope that we are standing here right now until the end, until the end of, the, of our, our calling in the Lord. So, I want to ask you while you are standing, if you are a house, what should we build first? Ano ang una tanga i-build kung magpatindog kita sa balay? What should we build first when we build a house? I want to ask our, our uh, foreman here, Dodge. Yeah, good. See? That's the best thing that we need to build first when we build a house. A house without foundation cannot stand, right, Dad? Yes. Okay, let's, you can sit down. Thank you so much. So, Dad said that when we, bu when we build a house, we need to build first a foundation because a house cannot stand without foundation like us. We are a house. We are a spiritual house. The stronger the base, the stronger the structure will be. Like this training center, this house of God, look at the pillars, look at these big pillars. If, if this big uh, house of the Lord has this small, has this kind of small um, foundation, does this building will stand? No, right? Because the stronger the foundation, the stronger the base, the solid the structure will be. So without foundation, the house cannot stand. 
It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 to 17, that we are this temple. We are the house of the Lord. It says there that, verse 16, don't, don't you realize that all of you together are the te temple of God and that the Spirit of the Lord lives in you? 17, God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. For God's temple holy is holy and you are the temple. So we are this temple. We are this house. So without us having solid foundation, how can we stand in these last days? Okay, let's go over to Matthew 7, verse 24 to 25. It says here, Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine, Jesus said, and doeth them, I will liken unto him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So who is this rock that Jesus says? Who is this rock? Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of, the, of them. And all of them walk through the sea on dry land. Verse 2, in the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. All of them ate the same spiritual food. And all of them drank the same in a spiritual water. For they, for they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and that rock was Christ. I never see a rock traveling. But here, can we see here that this spiritual rock, we are, we are spiritual, we are spiritual being, and we are a house of God. And a spiritual house needs to be founded in a spiritual rock, in a spiritual foundation, and this is Christ. Let's go over to Isaiah 28, verse 16. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Whoever believes will never be shaken. See, my teacher is still gone. What will I do more to stand? Our theme in this remnant workshop is my teacher is still gone. What will do? What will I do more to stand? And for me is I'm gonna stand in the unshakable, solid foundation, the rock who is Jesus Christ. It says there in Matthew 7, 24, verse 25, that we need to be both a listener and a doer. Why? Because hearing means nothing unless we do something. Doing means we apply it and we practice it upon our life. His word is alive. This word, this word in the Bible is not a history book. This word is alive. And if we apply it to ourselves, we are like a house built on a solid foundation that when rain of trials come, floods of problem came, strong winds of attack blew, beat upon us, beat upon you, you feel not because you are standing with the one who is greater, mightier and stronger rock who is Jesus Christ. His word is who he is. And if we live in his word, we are able to stand in every situation in our life. Because in every situation, God has a, has a solution. And his word, you will find direction and instruction. Let's go over to Matthew 7 verse 26. Let's continue. And everyone that heareth this saying of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon a sun. And 27, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Hearing the word 
and that doing it will make us stand on unstable, unbalanced, and secure and movable foundation. We become like a house built on the sand that when rain of trials come, floods of problem came, strong wind of attacks blew, beat upon our house, great is our fall. This will happen to us if we don't hold on and stand on the word of God. When problems and attack came, we became double-hearted, double-minded, confused and unstable that will lead us as falling away from serving the Lord. Can you say, I'm going to stand in the unshakable, solid foundation, the rock who is Jesus Christ? Yes, we need to remember this, that this word, even this word is just a word, but if this word is alive in you, you will not be shaken in every situation. Maybe most of you have your own favorite verse, right? Um, I want to ask Tito Onik, what is your favorite verse in the Bible? Yeah, so if this word is your favorite you are like you, you are like remembering it always reminding yourself right moms i want to ask you what is your favorite verse in the bible <laughs> yeah I, that's the, that's the right uh, that's the right answer so i want to ask also um, Dad, what is your favorite verse in the Bible? Hallelujah. So, do you believe that if you are standing in this word, when trials come, this word gives you strength, right? Yeah. Because, you know, this word is like a rock. This word is like your, this word, this word of the Lord is like you're standing in it. And kung ginadapya-dapya ka sa mga attack, you will not be shaken. Even though there is some attack side by side, you will not be shaken. And when the enemy is telling you this, this lie, you will say, the Bible says, I'm not alone. The Bible says, I'm not forsaken. The Bible in that your house, this house, this house is standing on it, which is the word, which is Jesus Christ. So, if we just read the Bible, if we just read the Bible and we, we don't put it in our hearts, we are like someone who is hearing it and just uh, came to the right ear and go, uh, and go out in the left, left ear. And then tomorrow, when the enemy is telling you, when the enemy is telling you, be careful what you preach, because the next day, the next week, it will, you will going to be tested from it. Because if we read this and we don't apply it in our heart, we just uh, come in into our right ear and go, go out in our left ear and we just, we just read it by our eyes, but we don't recycle it in upon our heart. When attacks came, we become unstable. We become double-minded. And James 1.8 says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So who is minding your mind? Sir James said. We can memorize all the scriptures, but if we fail to apply it in, the, in times of testing, we could easily stumble and fall. So for me, I, I have been experienced before a lot of raining trials as well. Floods of problem, winds of, uh, strong winds of attack beat me and tried to destroy me. But one thing I am thankful of the Lord, through hard times he never left me alone. You too, right? Hard times are not joyful times, but if we learn from it, it produces better version of ourselves. I also stand and I also fall, but because God holds me and lifted me up again, I still keep going and keep standing right now. The Lord did not promise us a life without storm, a life without the hard times, but if the Lord brings you to it, he will, he will bring you also through it. It says in his word in Isaiah 41, verse 10, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. So I just want to share the word of the Lord to me. If Tito Onyx says his favorite is Ephesians 6, then I also have mine. It's not favorite, but for me, this word is my foundation upon my life. When I first came here in this training center, I asked the Lord why I am here, Lord. Why you bring me in this place? Most of you know this word, and this word of the Lord is one of my foundation. Why I am still keep standing and moving forward despite of many attacks and opposition of the enemy in my life. Let's go on Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. But I am here because the Lord has a plan over my life. And the Lord also have a plan over your life. And His plan to me is to have a prosperous and good life. And the same as our teacher, Sir James, wants to see us having a good and better life. But part of the Lord's plan for me and for us along the way that we are here is that we need to go through the process of removing things out of our life that is hindering us to have a good and prosperous, prosperous life. This part of the process is tough. It includes deliverance, discipline, correction, pruning, and breaking. Who experienced this? Who experienced discipline? Who experienced correction? Who experienced pruning and breaking? Yeah. So this process is tough. This is not easy. This is not easy that deliverance upon deliverance upon deliverance, strong man upon strong man, discipline upon discipline, and correction upon correction. And this process is pruning us and breaking us. What I learned from Sir James is when the going gets tough, what is, what is the next sentence? Hallelujah. When the going gets tough, the tough will keep going. And my version is, when the process gets tough, the tough will keep standing. Can we say it? When the process gets tough, the tough will keep standing. Amen? It says, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. But this part of the plan of the Lord might feel hurtful and pain, painful. But if we endure and stand still in His Word, we come out of the process like gold. Job 23, verse 10 to 12. But He knows where I am standing and where and when He tests me, I will come out as pure gold. For I have stayed on God's path. I have followed His ways and not turned aside. I have not departed from his commands, but have treasured his words from daily food. More than daily food. Hallelujah. When my teacher is still gone, what will I do more to stand? I will keep myself more rooted and grounded in the Lord. Let's go over to four, Mark 4, verse 17. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Like a house without foundation cannot stand, and a tree without deep roots cannot survive. Rooted and grounded means established, deeply and firmly stable. So, It says here in Ephesians 3, verse 17, Then Christ will make his own home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. So, as I said here, I will keep myself more rooted and grounded in the Lord. A tree that has, that a tree that has uh, short roots, when wind came, when typhoon came, when storm came, it, this tree can easily, 
can easily be uprooted. So like us, if we don't, if we are not rooted and grounded in the Lord, if we don't have deep roots, like a tree, if we put our trust in the Lord, our roots grow down into His love, as Ephesians 3, 17 says. And His love is sustaining us. And it is, it is God's unconditional love that holds us to keep us standing strong even in tough season of our life. And Jeremiah 17, 7, verse 8. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by, by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. In Psalm 1, 3, they are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. If we put our trust in the Lord and make Him our hope and confidence, we are like unbothered trees, having deep roots reach deep into the water. We are that tree that have deep roots that reach into that water. And we are that tree and that living water who is Jesus Christ. And this living water makes us the tree unbothered, means season or out of season we can stand. We can still stand while others are dying. We can still stand while others are drying. We keep producing fruit while others are stopped producing. So it is very important for us as a servant of the Lord to be more rooted and grounded in, into the Lord. Because for us as a tree, like a tree, to have deeply established and firmly stable in the Lord, that whatever the enemy is uh, sending us, we will not be shaken. We will not be unbothered. As, as the Bible says here, that we, will, we are not bothered by the heat in long months of drought. Our leaves stay green and never stop producing fruit. So that's why we need to be rooted and grounded to the Lord, that we're able to stand while others are dying, their spiritual life are dying, when we are able to stand while others are drawing to the Lord. Hallelujah. My teacher is still gone. What will do? What will I do more to stand? My next point is, I will keep myself united with my fellow soldier. I have a question. If we are one battalion, if you want to go to war alone, can you win the battle? Anadaj? No? If we are one troop of soldiers, if you just go alone, you can stand to fight the enemy? If the Lord send us as one battalion, if you just go alone in a battlefield, can you defeat hundreds and millions of the enemy? No, right? So we need to keep ourselves united with our fellow soldiers in Christ. Are you a soldier? Are you a soldier? Yes. Hallelujah. So there, there is a saying, united we stand, divided we fall. Let's go, let's go over to Mark 3, 25. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And also in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. Two people are better off than one, for, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in a real trouble. 11. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can, warm, can one be warm alone? Verse 12. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. 
but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for triple bra braided cord is not easily broken. That's why Sir James taught us that it is very important to have a prayer partner. Say to your side, you are not alone. We go together in the battle. Hallelujah. So my next point is, when my teacher is still gone, what will I do more to stand? I will make my spirit more stronger than my flesh. I want to show you some pictures first. <clears throat> wants to be like this. <laughs> wants to be like this. <laughs> wants to be like this. wants to be like this in the spirit Who wants to be like this even in physical i want to be like this <laughs> but how about your spirit i cannot see it but can you can you sense it if your spirit can easily can easily get defeated. So, when my teacher is still gone, what will I do more to stand? I will make my spirit stronger than my flesh, not my flesh stronger than my spirit. Right? Hallelujah. Are you a spiritual warrior? So you need to make your spirit look like this. Even your flesh look like this. If your spirit look like this, you are in a good shape. So what we feed more will become stronger. What we feed more will become stronger. If we feed more our flesh, the flesh can defeat this spirit. Because these two, the Bible says, are contrary to each other. The spirit works contrary to flesh, and the flesh is contrary to the spirit. So what we feed more will become stronger. So is strong, who is stronger in you? If we make our flesh Stronger than our spirit, we fall in the battle. Romans 8 verse 8 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Galatians 5 verse 9 to 21. Now the works of the flesh, flesh are manifest, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, Adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like of, of this which I tell you before as I have told you in the time the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If we make our spirits if our, if we make our spirit stronger than our flesh, we can stand in this battle. Because the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verse 22 to 25, Spirit is Spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. 
and they are and they are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. We are spiritual warriors and we need to be in a good spiritual shape to win spiritual battles. Again, we are spiritual warriors and we need to be in a good spiritual shape to win spiritual battles. For we, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high place. So, I ask you again, feed your spirit than your flesh. Feed your spirit more than your flesh so we can stand the battle in these last days. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to end with this. Walk with God and God will walk with you. Stand with God and God will stand with you. But my question is, are you standing for God? Wherever you go, are you standing for God? Are you standing with God? Again, wherever you go, are you standing for God? Are you standing with God? I want you to go to this Daniel 3, 10 to 25 to answer this question. It says here in verse 10, He issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instrument. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into blazing furnace. Verse 12, but there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your God and don't, do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Verse 13, then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, It is true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my God or to worship the gold statue that I have set up. Verse 15, I, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made. When you hear the sound of the musical instruments, but if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. And then, what God will able to rescue you from a power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do, not need to def we, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into a blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. Verse 18, but even if he does this with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that his face become distorted with rage, he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them into the blazing furnace. Verse 21, so they, so they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. Verse 22, and because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire and a furnace and, fl and the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped in amazement and exclaimed to his advisor, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we, cer we certainly did, they replied. And God will walk with you. Stand with God and, sta and God will stand with you. 
when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was caught up, that they did not bow down to the enemy, to what the enemy has been set up for them. When they, caught up in, when they caught up in front of this king, Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar has given them, has given them the sanction that if they don't bow down, they will be thrown down into this blazing furnace. But they don't bow down. They keep on standing. Why they keep on standing? They said, here, we don't need to defend ourselves. Because they said, the God whom we serve is able to save us. They are standing because they are standing for God. And if we're standing for God, God will also stand with us. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bow down, the God, the God, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is just a small God. And this God that he, that God stage show that he set up is just a small God. And this is the work of Satan. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not shake and did not shake and upon all the things that Nebuchadnezzar said to them. Because they are standing with God and they are standing for God. Like Moses. Moses did not stand alone in front of Pharaoh. In front, in front of the Pharaoh. He's standing with God also. He's standing for God also. And now I want to ask you, wherever you go, when you go to the jeepney, when you go to the street, when you go to the province, are you standing for God? And are you standing with God? Can you ask yourself? My servant is standing with me, then the Lord will be pleased unto you. And no matter what the enemy is trying to threat you, you will not be shaken because you are standing for God. And not just standing for God, you are standing with God. Like Pastor John Dunn, like Sir James. In their, in their times that, we are, that they are outside doing the gospel before traveling, they, 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 they experience a lot of attacks, even going to the prison. Why they are not shaken? They are not afraid of it. They are not afraid of what the enemy is planning to them. Why? Because they, because they are standing for God. And not just standing for God, they are standing with God. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen? Hallelujah. If God put you through it, he will also walk you through it if you put your trust in him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are, are a true example of a true remnant. While others are bowing, they are keep on standing. They are standing for God and they are standing with God. Always remember that if we keep ourselves standing with God, God will stand with us. And help us even in the most dangerous and hopeless moment of our life. Can you say to your neighbor again, you are not alone? <laughs> Hallelujah. It says in, Ma, in, in Isaiah 43 verse 2, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not be thrown down. When you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for tonight, Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord, for this night, Lord God. And Lord, we bind every spirit that is hindering us, that is blocking us, Lord God, to stand, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We come against every spirit that keeps us sleeping. We come against every spirit that keeps us uh, uh, 
sitting, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We don't want to be lazy, Lord. We want to stand up for your glory, Father, in Jesus' name. And we command everything from the enemy to live right now. We command everything from the enemy to live right now. Everything from the enemy that is hindering you to stand and to walk with God and to stand with God and to stand for God in Jesus' name. Live right now. Live right now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Live right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Can we stand and worship the Lord? Hallelujah, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to keep on standing in you, Lord God. And everything that is hindering us to stand for you and to stand with you, we let it go, Lord God. The things of this world and everything that is stopping us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we know that if we stand with you, we are not alone. That even in the hardest moment of our life, you help us. You are there to help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we are not alone. We are not alone in this battle in this last day, Lord. We are not alone during our hard times.
Lord. Lord, anoint your servant, Lord, as she stand for you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you ignite that passion again, more passion, more fire for your glory, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, that you put that passion overflowing in her heart, Lord God, in Jesus' name, yes, Jesus, thank you, Lord, that she is not alone, Lord God, that you are standing with her, because she is standing with you, and she is standing for you, Lord.
you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not burn up, and the flames cannot consume you. And we need to be thankful for the Lord for that, that He was with us, that He is with us through tough times in our life, through hard times in our life. And can we sing this again? And let's worship Him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We worship you. Yes, Lord.
belongs to you alone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.